I got a, um, this is a Gold Star, prior to them becoming LG, combo VCR with a DVD player that was brought in with no top on it. The guy that owns it um, took a jam tape out of it and um, I guess he knocked something out of alignment because it won't play. He wants me to do the alignment and check it out. So here it is, machine with no cover on it. I have an LG combo DVD player with VCR that was brought in. The uh, complaint on this is that the picture is jumping. Actually, it had a tape jammed in it, so the guy that owns it took the tape, took it apart to take the tape out. So I wonder what other damage may be done. So let's uh, hook it up and try it out and see what's going on. Got a color bar tape. Picture's a little bit jittery. Okay, we're going to hook this up to the scope and uh, do a tape path alignment on it. I think that's all that's required on this. So we'll use the good old analog scope for this. I just got to find the test points to connect it to on this one. Looks like these are the points here. Head switch point and RF. So we'll get the RF connected. I just ground one probe. I should be able to clip it on here. Hey, okay, got my probes connected. I grabbed one of the probes off my Unity digital piece of junk scope that doesn't even work for this. Give you a shot of the uh, CRT screen here so you can see what I'm going to adjust. I'm going to be adjusting on this one the P2 and the P3 guides. So here's the two guides we're going to be adjusting and I'm going to try and get this uh, perfect. There we go. I know there's a slight level difference between the two, but what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the squareness of the waveform. That's what I'm that's what I'm after. Right? I don't want it doing any of this. I want it to be flat. There we go. Now the RF is good and the picture is stable. And as you can see, playback is perfect now. When I started, the picture was jumping. I should clean this transport. Well, I've got this thing apart. Probably should have done that before doing the alignment. What do you think? There's much dirt in here. Maybe there's a little bit. Oh, there's a little bit of dirt on the bottom of the groove here. So we'll check the alignment again after cleaning this thing. It does look like it needs a good cleaning. I guess I'm using a Q-tip on the drum, but I'm not going to get it anywhere near the heads. I'm just doing the, uh, the part away from the heads. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't have a heck of a lot of alcohol left. I don't want to waste it. As you can see, there was a lot of dirt on that head. Wow, that was really dirty, this machine, really dirty. Let's see how the uh, alignment looks now after I've cleaned the head. Yeah, it's still fine. The alignment is perfect. Nice and flat. So cleaning and alignment, this one's good for many more years of service. I'll load a blank tape on it and I'll make some test recordings off of my uh, in-house system, make sure it's recording and playing and we'll check out the DVD player and then I can send this one on its way. The guy's going to be coming back in about an hour. 
to get this one from me. Yeah, I'm just going to make a recording of my aquarium that I've got on channel 5. So I'll make a recording of that. And uh, it's in the SP speed, so the quality shouldn't be too bad. I'll let this record for a bit. And then uh, we'll be back to check it out. Okay, we're going to rewind the tape now. We'll play it back. And there's the playback of my aquarium. So this one is all done. I don't even have to put this one back together because it was brought to me in pieces. So there you go. That's how to do the alignment using a scope. Connect one probe to your RF test point. Connect your trigger to the switch point. Set your scope to external trigger from the second input or third input or whatever you've got it connected to. And uh, then proceed to adjust your P2 and your P3 guide to get the best possible RF envelope from a known good tape. In my case, I use this color bar tape that I recorded on one of my machines that I have certified is correct. Actually, all my machines are certified correct because I do have a factory alignment tape. I don't bring the factory alignment tape out here into the shop. It was a tape that cost a lot of money when I bought it and it only goes in my machines to set them up initially and then from that I make color bar tapes on regular tapes that if it gets chewed up I don't care. I got lots of these short tapes I can make as many of these as I want. I shouldn't say I got lots of short tapes but I've got a number of like 15 and 30 minute tapes remaining which are these are the best to use for alignment tapes because the tape itself is a thicker tape base so they're not as easily damaged. Anyway I guess before I uh, close off this video we should just verify that the DVD player works. So for that, I'll go grab a DVD. Okay, I have a DVD I can play. This is one of my own discs. This is actually up on my YouTube channel. This is the raw footage from the 1985 Abbotsford Air Show that I filmed. And I, I basically I dumped it to DVD first and then imported that into my computer and edited it from that and then uh, put it up on my YouTube channel. So this is the raw footage. And I'm thinking this was this was shot on a beta uh, two-piece portable beta system. This was this would have been on a beta tape. I can tell it's a tube camera just from the lag. I'm not sure which camera this was. Uh, it might have been the D. It could have been a DXC 1800, or um, uh, or or an HVC 2800. I forget which one this was done with, but it was shot on beta. I think it was a 2800. So this video is actually up on my uh, YouTube channel now. Uh, what I did is I took the beta tape and I just recorded it in one pass, put it right onto this DVD, and then took the DVD and imported it into my editing software. Co actually, I guess I copied it to the hard drive and then I imported it or vice versa. Anyway, it was this was the, uh, the first digital copy of it here and then from there it went onto my YouTube channel. There's what the original one looks like, complete with all its dropouts from a tape that was recorded in 1985, so, so 35, 35 years ago. So the DVD player works, this thing's all ready to go. Give the guy that owns us a shout and let him know he can come and pick his unit up. Actually, we should be able to record from this disc onto tape too. If I just put this blank tape back in and hit the copy button, it should. 
it should be able to record this because this is not copy protected. So if I put the tape in it and I press the copy button, it looks like it's uh, gone into record. So might as well test all of the uh, the features of this thing, make sure everything's working. If I play this back, go back to reverse. Yep. So there's where I punched in. There's the recording that I had on the tape first, and there's the uh, recording from the DVD player. Unfortunately, this one's not a uh, this one's not a DVD recorder. It's just a DVD player. Anyway, it's uh, it's fixed. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.